20 of the best teams from North America and Europe are set to do battle every week to go for the crown of their respective regions. The LCS and LEC are very, very competitive this year, and we have a lot to discuss as we head into our week one predictions. I'm Izzo33, and I will be guiding you through this excruciatingly difficult week of predictions. And without further ado, I think we better get straight into them as we light it up. We enter the neon green LCS for the first time this year as TSM take on 100 Thieves in an absolute belter to kick things off. This is going to be quite interesting to obviously predict as the Hunter Thieves in the offseason have brought in a new top laner in Tenacity to strengthen their lineup. As for TSM for the lock in tournament, which is what we're predicting right now, they're not running their starting squad as it appears to be. A speaker has been dropped to the bench, Hooney is not in the starting lineup, and as a whole, the roster seems kind of mixed in terms of strength. Now, I for one don't think TSM will realistically have a bad lock in tournament, but considering the plays that it looks like they're playing, I th don't think they're going to beat the current LCS champions in the opening matchup. That being said, if they do, then good on them. They may have a good season this year. But as for the changes that TSM have had to make and the losses that they've suffered with their head coach Bjergsen going over to Team Liquid as a player, that's a big loss for them. And I honestly feel they've had the biggest shakeup other than probably Team Liquid during the offseason. And as such, I have to go with a 100 Thieves win here in order to kick things off. So our second game sees Cloud9 and Golden Guardians on the Rift. And you're going to be surprised by this prediction. I've gone with GG winning this one. And you've kind of got to base it on the fact of the players. I feel that during the offseason, Golden Guardians retained their strengths. Licorice and Ablaze Olives were the star carries, I feel, during the summer split. Obviously, when Licorice came over from Fly, he stepped up big. And in the bot lane, picking up Lost and Ole together, that is a solid bot lane overall. Yes, people flamed Lost last season in TSM bot lane as one of their weak links, though he didn't play too badly overall. As for Ole, he's always been one of the top supports in this league, and he's a definite name to be feared. So, pairing him up with Lost, I think you've got a solid overall GG bot lane. A Blaze Olive is a star in the mid lane. He sh uh, by far should have been rookie of the split, and obviously, I don't think he could be, but you know. Picking up Pride Stalker is a decent pickup, and Licorice retaining the spot. Golden Guardians are playing with their top squad. As for Cloud9, they, I think, had one of the rougher off-seasons. Retaining Blabber was one of their big things. <clears throat> and what have they done instead? Well, Fudge has roll swapped to mid lane. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that move considering he was the actual rookie of the split. So in theory, you've got technically two rookies of the split potential players from last year battling it out against one another. That's, <laughs> that's a big statement to say. And as a whole... Actually, Fudge was most improved. What am I on about? <laughs> I forgot that they introduced that stupid trophy. Anywho... My prediction is GG winning this. Cloud9 honestly look a shambles for this tournament before it even begins. And I'm not criticizing the players involved. In fact, they're one of the only teams with a predominant NA lineup. And we'll get to a team that hasn't very soon. But yeah, I've gone with Golden Guardians winning this matchup. TSM return to the stage for the third game of the day as they take on FlyQuest. And for this bit, I kind of guess we have to look at FlyQuest more than TSM. 
and how they've actually managed to keep some of their squad together and also reunited some former teammates. Jose Diodo retains his jungling spot with Afro Mu and Johnson in the bot lane. Reunited from way back when they used to play on Dignitas, this was a very dominant bot lane. And with Afro Mu obviously being a solid leader and also in game shot caller, it's a very difficult bot lane to beat this year in terms of strength and players involved. As for the rest of the lanes, you've got to look at the mid lane. Tukului is how I think you pronounce it. I'm not too sure. Don't hate me. Former gamer or gamer's origin player who won the LFL in summer 2020. Obviously, that was the initial rise of the LFL as to what it's actually become now. And you then have to realize he's going to be playing with Kumo in the top lane, so two relatively young players. I honestly think this FlyQuest squad looks a hell of a lot better than what it did last split. And they're probably going to possibly continue to maintain that sort of development squad status. I'm not too sure, but it is a very young squad of very solid players that could be the potential future of NA. As for TSM, we've discussed them. But do I think TSM and FlyQuest are going to provide an interesting matchup? I certainly do. And one of which I've given to TSM overall to win. But don't be surprised if FlyQuest do. As it is quite a close matchup on paper. And the other group game that would be left remaining is Golden Guardians and Hunter Thieves doing battle. Overall, this realistical matchup has some sort of fancy taste to it. As I said last time we talked about Golden Guardians, they've done fairly well in getting this squad to a solid spot. However, 100 Thieves have maintained their championship winning lineup. And you have to realize that's going to play a huge effect in this tournament because they're looking to continue where they left off with NA dominance and run it through yet again another split. As such, I've given 100 Thieves the win here, and I expect some fireworks overall between these two lineups, as these are slightly more competitive than TSM versus 100 Thieves. Day 1 is rounded out with FlyQuest and C9. Spoiler alert, I don't think that C9 are going to go winless this day. I've given them the win here over FlyQuest, Although, I realistically think a lot of the games during the opening day are going to be extremely close overall. And Fly, as I said, have done very well to get the squad that they've got. Now, <laughs> as for C9, it's going to be interesting because this is going to be a good place for Fudge to test his mid lane skills. And... I don't know who the possibility of the C9 sub is for. Mid lane is... I don't even think they have one. But yeah, this is going to be funny to watch overall. And realistically, very interesting. So earlier on, I said that day one was close in terms of the games. Well, day two, not so much. And one of the big reasons why is the team kicking off this day in Team Liquid as they take on Dignitas in the opening matchups. And yeah, let's talk about Dignitas first. As a whole, they've managed to do fairly well in terms of their squad. Big improvements, in my opinion, in the mid lane as Blue, from formerly SK, joins the lineup. And that's a big step up, in my opinion, as he's replacing Yasui and Saligo, who, as a whole, didn't really click in the Stigmatas lineup last year. What's more, they've managed to retain for themselves Fate God, and Biofrost has returned to 
action a part of this lineup. You've replaced one OG support with another. That is honestly a side grade in my opinion for Dig. Neon staying in the lineup is solid. He's been a formidable player in my opinion in that role. Picking up Blue's good. And River joining from PSG. That is a big, big upgrade in that jungle role. Obviously, the Darduck troubles they had last year is now being kind of put to rest with River, who is a solid jungler, made it to Worlds two years in a row, and MSI. PSG Talon's former sub-jungler is no slouch, and I don't know what the language barrier, barrier will be, but hopefully they get over it very quickly, and we can actually see some very dominant Dignitas performances. But I don't think we'll see that in the opening game as they take on Team Liquid. The team that's built of no NA players at all. And they get away with it because they bring out the Bjergsen card and the Centauran card. Yeah. This lineup is illegal. As Kedra would say, it is totally illegal. And Bwipo, just an all-round top jungler and top laner. Uh, Santorin, probably the best jungler in the league, behind maybe Speaker. Bjergsen, he's just the GOAT for NA. Hansammer, the best ADC in the LEC last year. Core JJ, the best support in NA history, probably. This lineup is illegal. I don't know how it's allowed. There's got to be a rulebook against it. Possibly. And then Gilio as the coach as well. That guy's got OG origin to the finals of the LEC way back when. So as a whole... This lineup is very dominant, and I personally think it's going to be very hard to beat this year. Back when I was young, CLG was dominating NA with Double Lift and Afro Moo, and no one was really able to slow them down, even dominating the MSI Championship way back when. And I was never in doubt that this season... Their team and lineup was not going to get any worse than last year. But I was wrong. Oh boy, this lineup is not the strongest. It is, in my opinion, the weakest lineup this year. And you have to realize this is probably a development roster as a whole. They've got the likes of Jenkins in this lineup. The only saving grace that I can see is contracts who had phenomenal performances on Evil Geniuses last year. We'll get to EG very soon. IMT, though, is their opponents in their opening matchup, as they've managed to do fairly well with their lineup. PoE was picked up for them alongside Wild Turtle, giving them a very, very fresh look as the two former FlyQuest players that made it to that final have been reunited. This is a solid squad that could be in contention for a top playoff spot this split. But as I say, this is the lock-in tournament, so anything could happen. But I don't think anything will happen, as IMT are my solid p prediction here to win this opening matchup for them. Don't get me wrong, the last matchup is only saved by having IMT in it. This matchup does not need saving. In fact, it needs highlighting. Evil Geniuses and Team Liquid is our Anarchy Analysis matchup of the week. It feels good to say that yet again. And the reason it's being highlighted is because of the star power in this matchup. And I'm honestly going to highlight Han... Sama versus Danny 
and Hans Sammer versus Inspired. The two former Rogue players are matching up against each other in this massive battle that could decide who makes it out first in this lock-in group. But the rest of the lanes we need to look at, Impact, probably one of the most solid top laners in NA for a very long time. He got dropped from TL for, who was it again? Oh yeah, Alfari. Alfari bombed and he went back to EU as Bwipo took his spot. And this is going to be an interesting matchup to say the least. As both of them will be looking to flex on each other as a very wide boy matchup. Jungle, Santorum versus Inspired. You've got the Polska Gurum of Inspired who was, bear in mind, the MVP of the LEC last year, battling it out against Santorin, who has been atop of NA for quite some time. Mid lane, you've got Bjergsen looking to decimate a rookie, and Jodayum is going to have a hard time, I feel, as Bjergsen probably will pull out something nutty, maybe a zillion, <laughs> who knows. Uh, bot lane. Danny versus Hansama is my other matchup to highlight. You've got probably the best ADC in the LCS last year battling against the best ADC in the LEC last year. This is a hard matchup overall to predict, and it looks very, very spicy, especially considering Vulcan is partnering up with Danny. Vulcan was the C9 engage. He was the support of the century. He rivals Core JJ across the rift. And I'm just expecting both of them to not sit in lane, allow Danny and Hansama to battle it out against one another through the entirety of the laning phase. And they go wander off to other lanes being the secondary jungler. That's what I want to see. Because that creates carnage across the rift. And I cannot wait to see this matchup overall. But what is my prediction? I'm going to say it quite bluntly. It is a Team Liquid win. This matchup as a whole is going to be close. It's going to be fireworks. This is why we picked it as the matchup of the week. It's got everything in terms of star power and players. And I honestly just think Team Liquid got the better edge or the slight edge of the preseason drafting. However, I still feel this is going to be close. Very close to say the least. Until maybe a mistake at the 20 minute mark that leads to the game just being widened open by Team Liquid. That's probably what we'll end up seeing. But yeah, TL win this matchup as my prediction. IMT Dig is the next matchup to follow that banger. Yeah, this has got a tough task to do overall, honestly. But I still feel that IMT going to battle on through and absolutely trounce this Dignitas lineup. It could be very close, but I still feel IMT will win. You know, I really don't want to waste much time on this matchup. EG versus CLG. I'm just going to say EG win. Pick up their first win of the tournament. Pretty much eliminate CLG here and now. That would be brilliant. Day 3, FlyQuest versus 100 Thieves. Could be quite close, honestly. Let's be honest. You've got the development roster that's running a mock with that Johnson Afro Mu deadly duo who go up against FBI and Huhi. I like that matchup overall. Personally, it should be quite close. I don't remember if FBI and Huhi were together during the Afro Mu Johnson days. I think they were. 
but they weren't at the level that they're at now. As such, the prediction goes in favour of 100 Thieves here, as the third day is kicked off. You can speed through this prediction, TL versus CLG, TL win. It's time for the first Walls matchup of this season. TSM take on C9, and this one has left my Discord and my friends divided. Some have gone TSM, some have gone C9. As for me, I split it up into two factors. Number one, star power. TSM, meh. Realistically, if you're an NA fan, some of the names that are there are unknown. As for C9, yay, we've got Blabber in our lineup. We know who he is. We're going to definitely win. And that's why I've kind of gone with C9 in the star power stat. As for actual players and mechanics and all that jazz, I'm still going C9. I don't think TSM are going to have a good lock-in. I think they're going to have sort of a similar run to what they had during the last lock-in tourney. Where they got absolutely brushed to one side and barely scraped through into the knockout stages of this tourney. That's kind of the effect I'm expecting here. But C9, again, are a weakened squad as our TSM. So this realistically could go either way. EG versus IMT is a very juicy, juicy, juicy matchup. Personally, I think this is, if not the TSM matchup, the biggest matchup of the day. And personally, it is a matchup that I still feel is EG sided. EG have the star power and the mechanics and probably the leadership and the basically everything over IMT here. Though it could be close and explosive, which is something we actually want. Although, yeah, EG probably will win this pretty easily. And Finalamont, Golden Guardians versus FlyQuest rounds out the action in the LCS. I mean, it's not a big star power named game to round out your opening weekend, but it is certainly very interesting in terms of the players that are involved because I think these two teams are going to be fairly even in terms of where they finish this year in the possible 7th to 6th playoff place spot race. Yeah, it's going to be that close in my opinion. As a whole, I edged it out to Golden Guardians. I like their roster slightly more. And the other people have disagreed with me in my Discord. They still think FlyQuest are going to win. Nonetheless, that's the end of the LCS. Let's go over to where we can dance with them. And be reckless with our heart. Oh wait, he's not in the league anymore. Oh no! So if you think the LCS sucked in terms of the games and the players, don't worry. The LEC is here to not let you be disappointed, and they're kicking off with probably the biggest matchup this weekend. No, it's not G2 versus Matt on an opening day for the 7,000th time. It is, in fact, Vitality versus Mad. This is very interesting, because probably the biggest off-season moves happened with Vitality, in my personal opinion, this year. And, oh boy, are we going to no see it. They're facing off against Mad, so we'll start with the Mad Lions and their squad this year. It's stripped. They've lost a lot of the key components that won them the two splits in 2021. Kazi, no longer there. Humanoid is no longer there. Instead, we've got Rika and Unforgiven. Coming into the lineups. Honestly, not very bad players. Unforgiven is probably going to be rookie of the split. If not 
it's going to someone else who we'll get to probably very soon. Rika played very well, if I remember correctly, during the European Masters. I distinctly remember seeing him on the Rift. Um, El Yoya and Kaiser returned to the Mad Lads lineup with realistically the only weak link who possibly should be worried is Armit. I know he had kind of one of we- the weaker 2021 summer splits and didn't really perform too well at Worlds, but he's a very strong top laner and with the break that you get between the end of summer and then the start of spring being quite a significant amount of time, hopefully he's coming in rested, recuperated, and raring to go into action. Now, that's just the mad lads that we've talked about. Let's go over to Vitality. And I'll start in the bot lane. Lebrov retaining his spot, former Rookie of the Year on Vitality back then as well, maintaining that spot. He's pairing up though this year, not with Crown Shot or Comp, instead with the former Mad Lads bot laner Kazi to provide some entertainment on the Rift. Kazi clearly was not as good as Flect, according to management at Mad Lions, but yeah. He is on probably the super team of the LEC this year. And he is a phenomenal beast of a player that we're hopefully going to see absolutely smash the Mad Lions. You can kind of see where my prediction's going. As for the mid lane, it's the return of the King of Europe. He is not on G2, however. It is Perks. The mid lane madman, magician of all things mayhem, is coming back with an LCS trophy on his back. It's like, yo, I got this trophy. I got it in spring, granted, but I'm coming, guys. Yo. And yeah, he's coming back with gold to tell the tales that he is not a washed up retired player. He is instead looking to claim another LEC trophy here and do it in style. Especially when he's paired up with the style king in the jungle self-made. This guy, when he wants to, he can be fancy, smashy, do whatever he wants, (laughs) realistically, and get away with it. He is a BM god and he is going to decimate this league this year. I think that he's going to feel revitalized to have such star power alongside him. He's going to step up his game and perform at the top level we know him to be at. As for the top lane, the top king who finished in 10th place during whatever year and still made it to all pro, Alfari, is back in Europe after... Some time off on Team Liquid. Yeah. Probably the strongest player in the top lane this year. I think across every team, there's only a couple of players, I think, that can challenge him this year. And I don't think he gets to play them anytime soon. I'm probably jinxing myself. But he's going to have some fun here in the LEC and get insane CS stats once again. And lane domination. Yeah. So. Needless to say. I've hyped up Vitality. A hell of a lot more than Mad. And there's no reason why I wouldn't predict. The absolute super team of Vitality here. So we go from that absolute chaotic startup. To something that may be considered a bit more slower as SK take on Rogue. And this matchup as a whole is kind of very interesting. Because Rogue have lost a lot of their star power. And SK have done fairly well in my opinion in terms of off-season moves. And we'll start with SK for this actual game. 
they have managed to retain three parts of their core lineup. Gen X, who was dominant during the 2021 spring split, alongside his support, Treat. Now, Treat then had to go to the jungle during summer, but because, let's face it, SK could not find a jungler. We'll get to that in a few seconds. Now, Jezu and Treat have been reunited in the bot lane with their very aggressive style. This won SK a lot of games. And when they're pairing that up with the likes of Gilius, a very solid jungler, who in my opinion has been... We've been missing his presence in the LEC for some time. He provided the miracle run to Schalke, coming in quite late on into the season to turn that 0-12, 0-14 run they were on to get into playoffs. He was key in all of that. And to then get benched by Schalke for the summer split kind of ruined their chances of making it back-to-back playoffs on their last hurrah. Now he's on a lineup that's looking to appreciate his talents and use his CSing skills and honestly solid objective control to get themselves wins. And who are they pairing him up with in the mid lane? Well, it is the person that's not beaten K Corp once, but indeed twice in back to back LFL finals. He decimated K Corp 3 2 in the LFL. 2021 finals the time his team faced off against Reckless for the first time honestly and as for the other time summer playoffs absolutely decimating them 3-1 he's a EU Masters semi-finalist losing out to Fnatic Rising and he's also probably one of the star players on that Misfits lineup. He's now here in the LEC playing on SK and looking to decimate the rest of the league. Now, he's going to have probably a difficult time, especially coming in against Rogue in his first ever matchup on this top stage of Europe. And Rogue... I think, have lost out huge during the off-season. And Sama and Inspired have taken the plane abroad to NA retirement land, and instead they've brought in Malrang and Comp. Malrang is a solid jungler, don't get me wrong. He's played very high-level league in the LC. K, playing for Dam Wong Kia as a support, but when you're in the sub role, you're going to have a bit of time in the limelight, as he was playing second best as a whole to probably the best jungler in the league in Canyon. Now, going to be brutally honest, he's got probably some big shoes to step into here. As the former MVP, Inspired, was in this jungle position. And when you've kind of been behind an actual top level jungler for so long... I think he's going to fit quite nicely into Inspired Shoes. Granted, there'll probably be a little bit of a language barrier for a few weeks, maybe a month or two. But I think that he's going to be a nice fit for this rogue roster and possibly ease them into this spring split. I'm not expecting rogue to be dominant as they were during summer last year. I think they're going to have kind of a chill ride to the finals. If they even make it to the finals, I think to playoffs they're going to be quite chill. 
especially with Comp coming into the lineup. Comp is a top ADC. I know he's been kind of eh, realistically. During last year, he got subbed out for Crown Shot on Vitality, and Vitality didn't improve, let's be honest. But he is a good sub, uh, ADC. He played well during 2020. We just need him to return to form if you're a Rogue fan. But this is all just hyping up the match. Who do I think is actually going to win it? Personally, I've gone with Rogue. I just think they'll edge it out here. Although I think SK will have the strongest squad going into this matchup. It's just going to be edged out by Rogue. And it's going to be very, very close. Ladies and gentlemen, the king is dead. No longer is he on G2. No longer is he in the LEC. And it's fitting that we talk about his former team here facing off against XL. G2 are looking to bounce back. Failing during the regular season not even making it to Worlds in summer. They're here with a revitalized roster, and it is revitalized all hell. Only retaining Camps and Yankos, this lineup is very solid. Broken Blade, the former TSM top, former Schalke top laner, joined by his former coach Dylan Falcon, are here to take G2 to the top and the precipice of this league. Jankos, been a top-tier jungler for many a year. Same with Caps in his role, and it's actually going to be so nice to see Caps versus Perks yet again for the first time in a very long time. Flecked is the new ADC on this G2 lineup, paired up with probably the best support in the ERL leagues for quite some time, Targamas. I remember watching him on the Fnatic Rising Days as a player that honestly just decimated everyone. And he played very well, and I think this is his big break that's been needed Getting on G2 is huge for him. And another player who's quite big in terms of star power is this flat guy. Honestly, you look at his resume as to where he's finished. The highest he's ranked is in the LVP third place. He's never, and I repeat, never gone to the European Masters. He has not had international competition. However, he's played with some of the top players that were in the LEC and the likes of Torre as a support. So pairing him up with a former ERL League support in Targamas is a very nice addition to this G2 lineup. That being said, do I think... They're going to be XL, whom have made some big changes. Obviously, Kryze is now out. Instead, it's Finn. Finn, who had a rough time on CLG, getting Bud Light kicked over to Europe. Marcoon retaining his spot alongside Advian, Patrick, and Nuke Duck. Basically, XL have only made one change, and it's not a big change overall. God damn, G2 are winning this. There's not much more I need to say. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be quite a curb stomping by the new revitalized G2. Now we get to probably my downer matchup of the opening day of the LEC. Because it involves Astralis. I'm not a fan of their roster. They made a couple of moves during the offseason. As Kobe has joined the lineup, he was replaced on Misfits, who he's going up against in this opening matchup by Neon, which we'll discuss in a minute. But you've got Deja, 
the beast from the NLC is in the LEC after one season of league action. He is a relative rookie to top level league, ERL league, if that. And he is already on this stage on Astralis. That is a huge accomplishment. And he's paired with some kind of players that like to pop off as well. White Knight, very solid top laner. Penta killing last season on Renekton. He's also got Zanzara, the life of the party. The Astralis cheerleader, I would call him. And with two vets in the bot lane, one of which is an MSI champion, this is a decent Astralis, but I still don't rate him as a whole. Because we look across the rift at Misfits, they've changed a bit since we last looked at them. Herit retains his spot in the top lane alongside VTO in the mid lane. The two shining stars of the roster from 2021. Instead, he, they are now paired alongside Schlatan, the K Corp jungler who performed phenomenally, winning back to back EU Masters titles. This guy should be feared, ladies and gentlemen, and that is an understatement. They're being paired alongside the former Schalke Null Fear bot laner. Probably one of the big stars from this lineup alongside Broken Blade, Neon. This is, I'd say, a slight improvement on Kobe, but not that much of one. As for their last pickup, Mercer, the former Miss, well, former Gamers Origin player, I should say, he's now on Misfits. Lost out during the summer split of the LFL quite badly. But this guy has done fairly well in his career. And you then have to realize, maybe, just maybe, there's a chance this Misfits lineup has a phenomenal run this year. Personally, I've gone with them winning here over Astralis. There's no doubt about that. But... They have some very solid players that could realistically carry them to at least a playoff spot this year. You're probably wondering where I'm going to go with this matchup, and you're damn right I'm going straight to the top lane. BDS versus Fnatic. Wonder versus Atom. This is going to be probably the most interesting matchup in terms of the lanes, and... We're not even going to focus directly on it yet. Adam has joined a new team here. BDS, the new face on the block. And honestly, I think this is going to be a great change of pace for the former Carmen Corp top laner. Fnatic seemed like a toxic environment during the last season and split so getting out of there while he could to probably one of the nicest looking teams across the board. It's such a friendly squad. They've got Grabs and Duffman. Two pros at getting the best out of players. They were on G2 for many years. The back to back to back to back to back. Mandy's titles do get stacking up on one another. I couldn't be asked to pull out the rhyme. He, they're going to pull out the best for Adam and the change of scenery is going to hopefully do a lot of good for this player and as a whole should be what brings BDS to the top of the pile pairing him up alongside the actual Carmen Corp jungler in Syncroft I know I said Schlatan was he was in fact promoted from Misfits Premier I'm an idiot, I get that mixed up from time to time don't hate me. Syncroft, obviously, Carmen Corp. Back-to-back -back EU Masters titles. This player is instrumental to his teams that he plays on. Getting them the resources needed across the map. And especially 
into the bot lane, where we'll move over to right now. He was feeding the UK's best ADC for a long time, X Maddie. He left Fnatic Rising to go join the French Carmen Corp squad with his former buddy Targamas. They played together and they were dominant in the LFL and dominant in the EU Masters. This guy is finally getting his break after many years of just pounding it out in the UK LC and the NLC. It's such a big break for him, in my opinion. And I honestly cannot wait to watch the UK's best ADC for a long time do battle on this BDS lineup, paired alongside Limit. The former Schalke bot laner, or support as his actual title, is going up against some difficult competition this year for the support best player. In fact, I say that there's realistically no changes bar one in that role. But yeah, he was phenomenal during the Schalke days. And I think this is an upgrade as a whole to the BDS lineup. Finally, Nuclear in. There wasn't much to talk about realistically when we last saw him. He played on Schalke. He played. That's all I can really say. Now, as for Fnatic, Super Squad number two, ladies and gentlemen. Wonder. Probably my favorite top laner in the LEC for many years. He's done a lot for G2. He goes unappreciated from time to time, but this is a change of scenery. And hopefully it does good for him. Razork. Probably one of the biggest shining lights of Misfits for many a year. One rookie of the split with them. And honestly has been looking better and better. Every single time he graced the rift. Humanoid joins them in the mid lane. Do I need to say anything other than he was the MVP for Mad? During Worlds and during the regular season. He just brought life to that roster and kept them going. Upset. Wife buffed up. And he's paired alongside Hillisang yet again. The squad that we wished went to Worlds. That's now going to have to do it all again. Upset. (laughs) A lot was said during the offseason about him. But he is still the best ADC that Europe's got at the moment. Honestly. Who is that? Kazi. And that's it. They're the precipice of the top ADCs at the moment. And the rest are middling pack or unproven on this stage. So it's going to be good to see how Fnatic do this year. And if they can make back-to-back finals. But, as for predictions go, I have gone with a Fnatic win. Although, expect fireworks across the rift. So we spent quite a lot of time talking about each team individually. And how they battle off against their round one opponents. Or day one opponents, if you'd like to call it that. Let's just start to rattle through these predictions now. Starting off with Rogue and Misfits. I'm going to focus in on the jungle matchup as two unproven rookies to the LEC are doing battle here. This is going to be the biggest test to see if they can pretty much get their known players, the likes of the Larsons and the Odos of Rogue and the Herit and Vithios of Misfits going. Into a snowball that becomes unsurmountable. That's the goal of these two junglers. And I think Syncroft, the former, sorry, Schlatan, the former Misfits Premier and very highly rated European jungler, is going to get the edge. But 
I've still gone with Rogue. Personally, I just think there's going to be a top gap. And it's unfortunate because here it has a lot of potential as a player. It's just Odo is the king of top side, weak side. And yeah, he's just going to weather the storm that Hirit's going to try and put on him. And then Larson, Maorang, Comp, Trimby, all are going to have a party in the top lane and kill him off. XL BDS now. Yeah, XL retain their players. BDS new squad. I've gone with BDS. BDS just look a lot stronger than XL. There's not really much more to it than that. Rogue versus Mad now is the third game of the day. And personally, when you talk about them facing off against Rogue, I didn't think SK could beat them. However, after a day of games, they're going to do well. That's my personal opinion. They're going to beat Mad. Mad and Rogue have taken big hits during the offseason. There's no denying. And I think Mad took the slightly bigger one in terms of the players that they lost. So, SK, who've, in my opinion, improved as a roster, should do well here against the Mad Lads. Roll on up to a stump. G2 versus Astralis. Yeah, this is going to go over to uh, G2. <laughs> I'm not going to say Astralis, let's face it. I don't say Astralis for many predictions. Didn't last year. Probably not going to say it that much this year. Probably against XL, I'd say it, but yeah. G2 are winning with a fairly easy week one. And finally, the last game of the regularly scheduled 10 games of the LEC is our matchup of the week. Vitality versus Fnatic. Two big boy super teams on the rift to kick things off in this LEC split. It's going to be close. It's going to be fun. It's going to be juicy. Vitality obviously made the big signings with Alfari and Perks coming over from the LCS. And then the LEC squad of Fnatic just going local, picking up Wonder, raise Orc for themselves, Humanoid. This is going to be such a big battle, of which I still think we're going to see Blood shed across all of the map. Who do I think is going to win? Pretty simple. Vitality are my prediction. I couldn't bring myself to say Fnatic as much as I think that their squad is slightly and I do mean slightly better. It's very very hard to say that they'll do well here considering the fact that Vitality just have the names. And the names are big during a week one. In terms of how you predict. We are now entering the danger zone. As five more games have rolled into week one. You could call this a super week of action. As BDS take on the Misfits. Yeah. I just said how there's a super team in Fnatic. And they faced off against the super team in BDS on day one. Well, the super team of BDS are going to absolutely smash Misfits. <laughs> Enough said. I just think that the style favours BDS at the moment in terms of the players. The champs that are being seen across the world are more favourable to them. And as such, that's why I've gone with them winning here. Vitality XL. Vitality's hardest game, clearly. This weekend, as they take on the 10th place squad in XL. <laughs> I can't even say this without laughing. Vitality just are going to stomp them, aren't they? <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be a quick and easy match. Gets me through my day quicker, you know. Rogue Astralis. Rogue win. Enough said. Screw Astralis. Woo! SK Fnatic, the El Clasico. Second to last game of the week. I love this matchup, and I love it when there's a lot of good players. Do I think this is going to be close? No. Do I think it's going to be fun? Yes. Do I think that Fnatic are going to win? Yes. 
Do I think SK might get a pentakill and then somehow lose the game? Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of things I could say here. SK have done well off-season. I've said that many times. Fnatic have done exceptional off-season. I could say that as well. And in fact, I have done. And yeah. It's just the Fnatic team diff that's going to provide them the Bwipo bucks that they've managed to accrue from selling him and getting just god team status. They had to do it to us. It is G2 versus Mad. Opening week action yet again. What a tasty treat. G2 usually win this. G2 are my prediction. But can we just talk about the bot lane matchup? Unforgiven versus Flacked. That's just going to be nutty. And one of which I cannot wait to see. And with that, we are finally done with our predictions for this week i'm losing my voice because i haven't done this in so long and i am so goddamn excited to get into the lec i've been touting on twitter i've been planning stuff and preparing stuff for this and a huge huge shout out to akita sen on instagram and twitter and their channel is in the description as well for helping make pretty much everything you're seeing today. They are phenomenal. Be sure to check them out. Give them a hug. I don't know what I'm saying. But with that out the way, thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed this predictions video for both regions, leave a goddamn like down below. Subscribe if you're new around here if you want to. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Thank you.